if you kick the rod in one end with a hammer, it will propagate through, and the sound that you hear is actually the, uh, the sound wave making a longitudinal wave traveling back and forth between the edges. The reason that it reflects here is that it stops here. So the impedance within this material is such that it just reflects and it bounces back and forth. If I clamp it with my hand, this wave will be attenuated a lot. Actually, the energy I gave in the end is sent to my hand and absorbed in my shoulder. <clears throat> so what we would like to try to do is to maybe deliver the energy to the tether somehow. So a little bit of basic, I, I'm actually not a tether expert, but some basic theory. You can have three different kinds of waves in this tether. One is the guitar type of wave, where the tether is uh, brought to some extreme point here and released, and it will vibrate like this. This is a transversal wave. Uh, the other mode is that the wave is applied by pulling or pushing it at some point and the wave propagates just by a, a small bump. <coughs> so if I stretch the tether, I will make it narrower and this point will travel upwards with the speed of sound in the medium. The speed of sound in such a medium is nothing like we have seen before. It will have a tensile strength of at least 100 uh, uh, gigapascal, so a joint modulus uh, approaching 1 terapascal will be on. With some simple calculation, it's possible to show the speed of sound in this medium is something between 300 kilometers per second and 500 kilometers per second. So, for the wave to reach geostationary orbit, it actually traverses just one and a half minutes or something. So, if this is a stable system, not attached in any of the points, this could actually be the case. You don't need to attach a special meter here, it could be stable anyway. If I put it one meter down here, then one minute later, the upper end will move one meter as well. <coughs> so, now back to my room. This one have all the essential requisite to demonstrate this. So I have already disassembled one of these. <coughs> and this will form my climber. Or actually, I have three of them like this. They are put together with um, a clamp where I can adjust the diameter. So by this I can control the friction between the brushes and my tether. So let's see. So what I will do now, I will apply to the top pair a bay function that looks something like this. The way I do it, I use my sanding machine. Try it after, you can play with it. And if 
few days, you will experience there is really a powerful force here. I tried to lift maybe three kilograms with this one, and it lifts it nicely. Okay, now you maybe say you don't want to apply the wave at the top, because in the top, unless you have an expensive solar array here, this is not where you have your energy. So, it should be possible to apply it at any point. So, if you turn the wave function, apply it at the bottom instead, I don't have a machine to do this, I need to do it myself. It also goes up. So actually just by controlling the direction of this wave you can decide which way you're applying the wave. Okay, there are some issues of course. Um, a wave function like this in the time domain. So if you have time here, and here amplitude. is composed, as you maybe know, of a Fourier series of sinus waves. So, in the time domain, my function looks more like this. Um, in tethers, different waves do not propagate with the same speed. So, you can only make this function uh, where your activator is, unless you are clever. You can, if you apply uh, this function to, um, to the bottom of the tether, what will happen is that initially you will have something that looks like this triangle shape, but later in the tether you will have all the high frequency components arriving at your copter rate or uh, the geo, and then the lower frequencies with higher amplitude will come later. But you can synthesize this. If you do this in the reverse order from the bottom, you send first your uh, low amplitude, high frequency sign. So you assemble this function where your client is. And also by doing this, you should reduce the strain on the tether because only here you have the steep acceleration points. Uh, so only where your uh, client is, you have uh, this waveform. This waveform, if you uh, design your Climber <coughs> intelligently, you absorb most of it. Uh, so, of course, if you want to have passenger and stuff here, you need to have a mechanical suspension system uh, that makes a linear movement of uh, the carriage, while the actual uh, gripping part is the one that experiences this uh, jerking action. Also, it is not 100% efficient because this device, I have friction when it moves. What you can do in addition to this, you can have clamping modulation. <coughs> so imagine, I, my hand is now the, the gondola going down. If I want to go down, so far I've only seen proposals for an for a, a air brake in the end, which is very healthy for the humans on board, and you have high speeds and so on. You can actually clamp your tether 100%, release it, and clamp it again. If you do this, there is no power dissipation in your joint if you do it uh, perfectly. The power, the energy that your uh, momentum has, is transferred into the tether as a wave, so actually the opposite happens. So when you descend, you're sending your mechanical energy back here, and you can recover it. So, now the question is, activate just like this. We saw in Pierre's demonstration, the shaking table of 88 kilonewton. It is possible, with this shaking table, to make any waveform in the audible area, I guess, uh, with up to 88 kilonewton. So, we already have activators that can do this. So, you can ascend and descend, and you can even recover 